In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Fetch XML in Power Pages site. Now, Fetch XML is a language, it's a query language basically used to query the underlying table. Uh, now, in this example, I'm in make.powerpages.microsoft.com. This is one of the website. And if I run this website, I'll show you uh, what I'm rendering. Okay, so there is a page called as airlines and it lists down all the uh, major airlines in the world. Uh, now, uh, it, it, it is just a display format, you know, like it, it renders all the record. Now, what if I want to filter out a specific record based on some conditions? Okay, so let me uh, show you how this looks. Now, I'm just running this uh, particular Power Pages site. So let it load. In the meantime, I'll show you how the table looks like. So this is how the table basically looks like okay so it has uh, it has airline and has uh, i think it's opening the page so let me go back here yeah it has airline it has country it has some points and make and status okay so it it renders uh, how many records one two three four five six seven seven records okay so seven records present in the uh, table and uh, this power page site uh, which i have just triggered it will render those uh, particular table uh, you know, in the page now the condition is basically if what if i want to uh, make uh, like put some query around it like say if i say uh, show me the content which has uh, in airline column uh, has air in it okay so air france air india british airways uh, Qatar Airways okay so this four records has air in it and that's why it should only show that record so if say, let's assume that's, that's the query okay so how do we uh, execute that okay now what I've done is I have uh, ahead of time I've created an app out of this table okay so I've clicked on create an app and it created a specific app and it has created one app okay now let me show you this power page side this is how uh, this power pages site would look like if i click on airlines here uh, this is that power pages site and it will display all the uh, records okay now if i want to filter out i can filter out and i can type in whatever i want and then i can get this uh, record uh, up and running but my goal is to use uh, fetch xml okay now let's go into this uh, airline app now this airline app i have provisioned it i have run it and then this airline app will look something like this yeah so this is how the airline app will look like now in order to generate fetch xml query what you need to do you need to click on this edit filters okay so if i click on edit filters and if i say the column airline okay so if i click on airline airline not equals but i would say contains the word uh, air in it okay contains the word air in it and i click on apply okay now, the moment I run this, you will see the result in this particular view that any airline which has the word air in it will be displayed. Okay, so there are four records now. So instead of seven, it is four now. Uh, again, I'll go here. I want the XML, okay, fetch XML. So what I'm going to do, I'll click on download fetch XML. Once you do that, it will download an XML file. It will warn you. Uh, so you accept that warning and then you will get this fetch XML file. Okay, so let me open this folder for you and i'll just open this in notepad fetch xml.xml open with notepad okay so this is how the fetch xml will look like okay it is not that friendly you know uh it is not uh you may not understand what it is if you open it in notepad let me close this and let me open this in vs code so what i've done over here is i've opened the fetch xml file i'll just do a right click and format this document now this is how the fetch xml file will look like now we are going to take all this fetch xml code and put it in our uh, power pages site now how do you do that now first thing first what you need to do is first you need let's let's craft our uh, code okay uh, so uh, what i'm gonna do i'm gonna click on uh, open a notepad and here in the notepad i'm gonna uh, write the fetch xml code now how do we start with you just put opening braces percentage and then put fetch xml okay and then put some name okay so i'm just putting some four axes okay now here if i would percent and then closing braces 
and how do you end that fetch XML as you put pulse int and then say end fetch XML okay. so this is how you put the fetch XML code now the fetch XML code the, the syntax let let me copy that in the notepad again and this is how your fetch XML will look like okay so we are done with this. Uh, we not what now. What we are going to do? We are going to copy this. Okay. Now where to copy? Uh, let's go into the Power Pages site. Now here in the Power Pages site, let me create one page and I'll call it as Fetch XML Rendering. Okay. This is a simple uh, page. It does not have anything in it. Uh, let it save first, and then once it is saved, we are going to edit the code. Okay. Uh, once uh, we edit the code, uh, it will navigate you to Visual Studio Code. And there you can uh, write the uh, fetch XML code. Okay, so simple things. Uh, now we'll just format it first before we uh, edit the code. Uh, so I'm just going to close this window. Let me close this. Close this. Okay, so this is that code. Uh, uh, the backend code. So I'm going to copy this div. Okay. So I'm going to copy this div, paste it here. Okay. And we're going to operate on this div. Okay. So here, what to do? Just copy this. And it will execute that fetch XML code. Now, okay, fetch XML code will get executed, but you're not going to see any result. Okay. You're going to use this result. Uh, to render something okay so in this code if you see here this is just the code of uh, XML code but it won't render any result now here if you see xxx now this is a let's assume this is a variable okay this is a variable which will hold the fetch XML results query okay now what to do with that okay so there are ways through which we can uh, render some results so one is uh, if I put two opening and closing curly braces here and here if I say x x x x whatever name you have given over here so if it is y y y just put y y y okay dot results dot entities dot size okay now what it will do it will give you the number of records it is going to return okay so let me copy this and put it over here okay put it over here So this is, I'll just say, and then I'll put some uh, tag, okay? I'll just put a tag and say total records from the system is this, okay? And I'll put this in the, between the B tag. Okay. So this is how uh, it will give you the result. Okay. So I'll just save this, control S. And once you're done with this, let me go back here, click on sync. And I'll just review the site. Now, if you see here, it has written four record, which is the correct result because we have written a query to uh, specify airline contains the word air in it and four records are written. So the result is correct. Okay. Now, the next step, what we're going to do is like, if you want to render those results, then how do we go ahead and render those? Okay. Now, remember, this is a fetch XML query and it stores the value in xxx and from there we are deriving the results okay so we have returned the uh, row count uh, now there are other things which we can return is uh, uh, how do we render is uh, say the first thing now you know like the, it won't return one record it will return multiple records so then we need to make use of for loop okay so for okay so let me put a for loop over here okay and then uh, we will just end this for okay so percentage and for percentage okay so we are just writing the for loop and then we are ending that for loop okay so what what do we get in that for loop okay so first thing uh, just to return the result what we can do is we can just type uh, some value but before that go into the for loop and then it will iterate through a variable so result in okay so this is like x for x in whatever is a variable name so xxx dot results 
dot entities okay so it will iterate through that uh, entities uh, and then it will uh, put the value in the result okay now you take that result and then put result dot the internal name now the internal name of the column which you want to render okay so let me go back to the table now here in the table in the back end where is the table table is yeah let me open that table so this is the airlines table through which we are rendering now if you want to render say two columns okay one of the column would be the airline name and the second column would be the country name then we need to take the internal name of that particular column so airlines uh, airline is the column here so then we can click on edit column go to advanced option and here pick up this name crd09 underscore airline okay so this is one column which i'm gonna render okay uh, and then the second column would be oh let me close this is the country so if i click here click on edit column advanced options uh, and then copy uh, the country name this is a logical name right so i'm good with this now okay so i'll just paste it here okay so how do you render this result dot crd09 underscore airline okay so this is my column name and then i'll just copy this and instead of airline i'll copy this part okay so i'm rendering two different uh column over here uh within this for loop okay and let me save this now so i'm just copy pasting this and i'm gonna put it again in the back end code here this is the for loop okay let me put a horizontal line just to put that demarcation between the older record and the new record let's click on s control s sync Now, as you see over here, it has returned the record Air France, France, Air India, India, British Airways, UK, Qatar Airways, Qatar. But this is not in a tabular format. So now the you know, Power Pages site does not know which format do you want to render. So for that, what we need to do is we may need to uh, utilize, say, HTML tabular format. Okay. So for that, the syntax is pretty much simple. It is like a simple HTML, uh, which you just need to type in. So that's uh, basically a table tag, okay? So you put a table tag, you put slash table, uh, and then within the table, you need to have a, a header, okay? Now the header is uh, one part of the row, so it is TR, okay? And then you have TH, okay? So which is TH and then slash TH. So you have one of the header, uh, and then once you copy this, uh, you have two header and then you close that TR, okay? So this is how you get the header rendered. Now you have a TR uh, to render the data. So let me put a TR and then slash TR. So that's the second row. Uh, and here you put a TD, okay? So you put a TD and slash TD and then again slash td so this is how you basically render the table okay now for table uh, it will not render because it will not have any border in it so let me put some style here so if i say style equal to maybe uh width uh, i just want to render 100 percent okay width 100 percent uh, and semicolon and then maybe border uh, colon one pixel okay uh, and it's the color is a solid black okay so I won't put much style, but this is how you render the table. Now in the header, you first want to display airline, okay? And then in the uh, second column header would be country. Now here, what you need to do is, remember, this is the one which we rendered, right? So we'll just copy this and we will paste it here. And we'll just copy this and we'll paste it here. Okay, so this is how you render this. But now, it has to be part of this like you need to get this result variable then how will you use it okay so see I'm, I'm talking about this part okay we have rendered the table now this will not just work because the result is not there okay so what you need to do you need to copy this for loop and then for loop will be iterating from here right and it will render that result and then this for loop will end over here right and yes so here 
this is uh, basically uh, a for loop which renders this for result in xxx dot results dot entities and then you get this table rendered right so let's run this and see whether this is correct or not okay so we go here and let me remove this uh, for loop from here okay and then paste this table so if the syntax is correct so i have a table i have slash table i have this tr which has a header in it and then i have a tr uh, which has the for loop rendered right uh, so looks good to me uh, let me save this control s and uh, sync the change So as you see over here, now this has rendered the record in a tabular format, okay? So just to summarize, what we have done is we have taken one uh, table, okay? Which is called as an airline table and it had one, two, three, it's like seven, eight records in it, okay? And then what we have done with that eight records is like we have uh, written a query which said that airline contains air. So we have shortened the records and we have put some filtering around it and that filter we're downloading using the fetch xml the fetch xml syntax is uh, uh, we have copied the fetch xml syntax from that xml file uh, and then we have enclosed that in a person fetch xml and then the variable name uh, and then we have seen the results the size of the record and then we tried putting it in a for loop uh, just to render that in a tabular format so that's it folks this is how you basically use fetch xml uh, and render the records in power pages site um, uh, using liquid language code thanks for watching